An Oklahoma mom of three rushed to the emergency room in her first trimester of pregnancy after noticing she was bleeding. There, J.C. Statton was told she was likely having a miscarriage and that she should go home. The 25-year-old and her husband, Dustin, then made an appointment the next morning with her OBGYN, who did an ultrasound and blood test. It was then that they learned the crushing news. J.C.'s pregnancy was non-viable. Known as a partial molar pregnancy, her embryo had too many chromosomes, preventing it from developing properly. Complications include a placenta filled with cysts, preeclampsia, or even a rare form of cancer. In JC's case, she was bleeding because one of the precancerous cysts in her uterus had ruptured, yet she still could not get help. She says her doctor told her flat out, your baby will not make it, and this is very dangerous. They added, you only have one option, and we can't do that here. Senior staff attorney at the Center for Reproductive Rights, Rabia Mukadam, says Oklahoma has three abortions bans in effect, and each of them has different language describing the medical exceptions. She explains that it's resulted in extreme confusion about what constitutes a sufficient health condition for a doctor to provide a medically necessary abortion. Over the next week, JC became even more ill as her doctor tried to transfer her from her Catholic hospital to another facility. Then she started bleeding again. After more tests at a different ER, JC was seen by two doctors who said she needed a DNC to remove the harmful tissue from her uterus. But apparently, the ultrasound tech disagreed. She even remembers hearing the doctors arguing with him but the procedure did not move forward. She was then transferred to another hospital where a team of doctors and specialists came in and told the couple, there's nothing we can do according to Oklahoma law. We can't even really touch you. She says, unless it's a huge emergency, unless you are crashing in front of us. Mukadam says doctors are now extremely confused about what condition is bad enough to provide an abortion, which combined with possible penalties like a five-year prison sentence or losing their medical license, put doctors in a position of weighing their own liberty and safety against what should be patient-centered medical care. JC learned that she could get help terminating the non-viable pregnancy in Kansas, Colorado, and New Mexico. Her doctors offered to send her medical records while she says she was, quote, trying not to die. Though she remembers them all as kind, JC also remembers their ultimate word. The best advice we can give you is to go sit in the parking lot until you bleed out, and we will be ready to help you when that happens. Instead, JC and Dustin took action, driving three hours to a reproductive health clinic in Wichita, Kansas, where she finally got the procedure she needed to survive. But her situation caused long-term damage. The precancerous tissue is growing again because her HGC hormone levels were so high that her body was still making the tissue even after the procedure. Mukadam says if she had received care when this was diagnosed, she would never be dealing with these HGC levels. As for JC, she's trying to schedule another surgery to remove the tissue and plans to get her tubes tied to prevent future pregnancies, explaining, quote, if I was to get pregnant, I don't think I would be okay. We can't imagine even the thought of going through anything like that again.